Hi there, it's Janice Thompson from jazzledazzlecraft.co.uk. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I live and work in Scotland. I am just filming this video today to show how to make this double tower card. Um, I'm doing this as it's part of a class. Now these measurements are down to Mary Roberts and my Stampin' Up! team. Uh, she worked out these so that they would fit into a UK C6 envelope but they are in inches. I have yet to work that out in centimetres so I am working in inches today. So I have got... The, the original idea when I learned to do this card was from Gail Lockie who's also in my team. Now neither of these ladies have channels so I've nowhere to direct you but I am sincerely thank you to them both for showing me how to make this math card. Gail's one is a slightly bigger card and I wanted to adapt it to fit into one of our C6 envelopes. And as I say, Mary worked it out, so therefore there's no point in me reinventing the wheel when one of my lovely ladies has worked it out. So then I'm blethering now. So I am not sure where my ball tool that, oh yeah, I can see it now actually. Do you know sometimes? Right, so this is the ball tool that goes with this scoreboard. I'm just going to move this forward so that you make sure you can see where the measurements are. So I've got two pieces of cardstock that are both four by eight and a half inches. And I am going to score at three and a half, five. Six and a half. I believe this is probably um, originally a Sam Culcock card from Mixed Up Craft. I'll double check that. Um, so that is, that's the scores that we need here. I'll do this one the same. So score at three and a half, five. Six and a half and eight. That is the scoring. So let's pop the scoreboard out of the way. It does take up a lot of space. And score and uh, fold and burnish on the score lines. Basically what we're going to be doing is making a tower and just sticking it down there like that and then another one, I should have actually done that, I did the, I could have turned that upside down, what, what am I like today? Yeah that's okay. But I don't know what's wrong with me today. Right, yes, yeah, so that will get stuck down like that. In fact, I might just do that because otherwise I'll forget what I'm doing. So you can do a single tower card, but this one is a double tower card. So basically just to have that straight, I need to... You might, if, if you want to be totally accurate, you could actually measure, but I am just doing it by eyesight. Just hold it a moment till it... You can stick your designer series paper and your stamping on first, but basically it's just to make sure the construction of this works as why I'm filming it. I was trying to write out the instructions and I was struggling just to write it out so I thought it would be a good idea to film it so that um, you can see what you're doing here. So this time I want to come towards this so we will we'll fold and score that way. Well, I haven't made it up to Mary's measurements just n until now, so be patient here. I'm going to um, 
just put some glue on that tab. You can do this with tape, it doesn't have to be wet glue. I'm just a bit of a wet glue girl. I just want to make sure they're all straight. And if you fold it down that way you'll know that you've got it on the right place because I'm going to be gluing something over there anyway so again just make sure it can all fold flat as well and that it is straight and that's a good reason for using wet glue is because you can move things until you're happy with them so we're going to be doing something along the lines here now this is the piece we have a piece of designer series paper which is going to be going here i didn't work out where we should be gluing these mm -mm. Oh, that's the bigger bit, that goes, bit that goes there, sorry. Right, so this piece, so what we'll do is we'll glue this piece on first. And it's glued on here. And I'm just using measurements and my memory of making the card. So this piece is four inches by three inches so if you put that if you glue that straight and then the glue on here Just make sure that that is lined up. That is the final size of your card. I might have that a little bit squint, but do you know when I'm finished, I can just trim that off with my snips. I think my cutting has been a little bit, just a teeny weeny bit. There, so I can just. a sliver off there. That's fine. Right, so there we have the front of the card, which I could have stamped, well I'm not going to stamp on because I'm just going to pop some designer series paper there. I'm just going to stick on the bits that I'm not going to stamp on and then I can set them aside and do some stamping. So this paper is from the Cheerful Daisy Suite. I don't remember what the paper is actually called. What is it called? And um, during June, this is all 50% of all our designer series paper. This is called Fresh as a Daisy, the paper. It's fab. I might have that upside down, I don't know, but I'm not going to stress it. So then I'm going to have these pieces on the outside. This video was really just to show you the actual construction, the rest. So this is part of my Fresh as a Daisy product class in June, product based class. And I was just writing out the instructions and I, I can't actually work this out in words so I kind of thought my words are not adequate if there's a wee video then and I thought I might as well just share it with everybody I'm going to stamp a piece for there and then I've got these two pieces boop, boop, boop. So it's just a quick and easy card, really, if you, once you've done all the cutting, it isn't too complicated.
So that's, that is the basic construction of this card. It can fold and it fits in to our normal sized envelopes in the UK or C6. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if it would fit in an A2, but it certainly fits in a C6. So we can mark that out. I'll just, just have a look. I don't have, no, I don't have a, a C2, but I do have a, a C6 envelope there. So you see, but I think it might just fit into a C2, but we'll try. We'll, we'll try. I'll have a look at the measurements at a later date and maybe do it with, with a different suite. Um, right, so now I want to do a bit of stamping. I've got this to go on the back so that you can write your message or whatever. So, so um, I don't know what we're going to do, some stamping here. Wishing you the brightest birthday and maybe we'll just use some of these little daisies today. That paper has got, you know, some lemon lolly in it, so I think I might use that. Might just, let's see what we've got just to finish it off. just use the pebbled path because I've used pebbled path paper and that's what's um, in the background of the paper as well. Bit pretty. So let's just put the greeting on. Oh well, look at that, she's got ink on already. And if you were going to personalise this card, you maybe want to put um, a photograph in here. You can decorate it as much as you like. And I'm just going to... I've not really played with this lemon lolly too much. Oh, it's nice. It goes quite nice with that pebbled path, doesn't it? That'll be enough. We need to leave room to write a message. And then we've got these two strips. And again, let's just... Let's go for it. Oh, that wasn't so clever, was it? No, we'll just, we'll just go over that. Just a decoration, isn't it? I just decided to cover it all. But obviously, just you do what floats your boat, as they say. In the kit there are some die cuts that you could stamp, you can either put them there or you could do something across here. I like it. This I'm easily amused. So yeah, I'm just adding the decoration. So 
in the instructions you have the measurements for all of these. I will do a blog post at a later date so anyone watching this after the event um, then please ask me to pop the link to the blog post with all the measurements if you want to make one this size. If you want to know any more about making a double tower card then check out Sam Colcott's That's Mixed Up Craft because I believe that's where my team lady first learned the idea of this kind of card. You can make it any size you want. I just wanted to make it. I think the one, the original one that we were taught at our team get together was um, would have fitted in a UK DL envelope. That's quite cool. So I'm not quite. Do you know? I don't know if I've got here. Nothing to do. Everything's out of my reach. I thought I had a pack here so that I could. No, I've not. It must be in the other room. It's not here. Oh, it is here. I thought that. So, this is what you. This is the larger one that I made. I worked this one out. This one I worked out in centimetres. But it's still too big for the envelope, so we need to change it down again. But the, I, you get these die cuts in your kit. No, there's another idea for um, the stamping. I just chose to use this small stamp today. So that's that was my sample card. You see, it is considerably longer, but it would fit in a DL envelope. Um, again oops come out you could use these so that is actually too wide for this smaller measurement that I've done but I think it would do quite well to have that across here so you could stamp where did my pebble pad I think oh here it is And you can have your birthday greeting across here as well. What? We'll just put the same sentiment. Wishing you the brightest birthday. And the backing here is on the wild wheat, but the wild wheat's in there too. I think though I'll just do a bit of lemon lolly round here which is the colour that's in that wee daisy there. I think that's just quite cute. Just take that around the sentiment. Just turn in the stamp as we go. Then ink it up, stamp it off, put that in the middle, ink it up, stamp it off and just fill in that space. But your second generation in the middle so that you can read the sentiment quite clearly. And then we will stick these together. you can you know you can use any thing you want for your sentiments you can add bling as well to bling it up a bit now what I'm thinking here is if I'm going to pop that there then I only want to stick it on this side so I just want some glue there quite a bit where there
but not right to the edge because the edge overhangs the, the score a little bit as well. <laughs> things I have to do. So there you have a quick and easy double tower card. Isn't that fun? And as I say, it folds and fits into a normal envelope. So thank you so much for watching today. And yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Please press the bell icon to get notified when I'm coming on again. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.